Hello everybody, this is John Evans and you are watching the internet program Mid Mod Money, the show that teaches you how to buy and sell vintage items for profits. Heavy profits, that's what we're here for. This is uh, an episode that is not a thrift store haul. Usually I do thrift store hauls. This is a flea market haul. And uh, pardon me for getting emotional, but look, it's the end of flea market season. Uh, that is tragic to me because the profits are so great at flea markets uh, because you have John Q. Public setting up in a uh, parking lot somewhere, throwing down a blue tarp, and uh, it's uh, it's anyone's game at that point. So I'm going to miss this. Uh, luckily, I live in Pittsburgh. We have two indoor-outdoor flea markets, uh, Rossi's and uh, Trader Jack's. So I went to both on this day, and this was my haul from one day of flea marketing. So let's get uh, started and take a look at what I found. First thing I found were these. Not an earth-shattering find whatsoever, but they're pretty nice. This is a carved candle holder set. No markings on it. Hard to say who made it or even what kind of wood it is. It, uh, it's teak. I think it could be teak. Doesn't have that weird teak smell, but it's a uh, it's a pretty nice set. So uh, they were two dollars. I paid two bucks for this. I'm gonna sell it for sixteen bucks. Vintage candle holders sell all day long. Sixteen dollars. Good look, good grain on the wood, easy money. Next thing I found uh, was this beautiful set. Beautiful set of cool, colorful, almost psychedelic um, cups made by a company called Royal Crown. Now this is called the Paradise Pattern. Uh, and I'm a, I, I thought these were the Acapulco pattern, which is a very kind of expensive set. They look a lot like these with the birds and the flowers, but they're different. And those Acapulco goes for about 50 bucks. This is like a, uh, same era. It's Acapulco adjacent, clearly. They're called Paradise. Uh, so not as sought after. I'm thinking, uh, probably 24 for the set of four. I paid four bucks for them. She was asking five and I got her all the way down to four dollars because I'm a master when it comes to wheeling and dealing. So the next thing I found, uh, and this is probably my favorite story of the day, because I found this clock in front of someone's booth in the indoor portion of uh, Trader Jack's. And this was in front of her booth, and it's mid to late 70s. Uh, and I asked how much she wanted for it, and she goes, give me a dollar. And I'm like, okay, because, you know, look, I'm a buyer at three on this, but if that's how you want to negotiate, you want to go right to give me a dollar, I'm going to bust out that dollar and uh, take this back to my booth, because this is, I don't know, 16, 18 bucks, it clockworks, it's in great shape, uh, again, probably 75, 1975, 1980, somewhere in there, um, all right. Uh, and on the subject of clocks, that was one of two clocks I found. I sell clocks pretty good if they're if they're nice. And this one sure is. This is look at this. Wow! Holy smokes! That's a nice clock, right? About two feet wide, about uh, eighteen inches tall. Beautiful Elgin clock. This is not actual stained glass, but it looks like stained glass. As you can see, it has great color. The butterflies on there are wonderful. This clock was in the indoor portion of the uh, flea market, and the lady who had it, who I've dealt with many times, I said, uh, how much do you want for the clock? And she said, well, I was asking 15, but the clock doesn't work, so you can have it for five. Well, <laughs> well, I know a clock guy. My girlfriend and uh, we fix clocks all the time and sh uh, we're gonna put a new clock mechanism in this and turn it back into a $50 clock yeah because of the color because of the massive size that's 50 maybe even 55 bucks so the mechanism hardly costs anything I'm gonna clean this up $50 profit on the Elgin 1970s butterfly clock all right, uh, next thing I found was in the outdoor par portion. Portion, the outdoor portion is uh, this cool ashtray. Great, great design. Very 60s, very stylized 60s. This was $3. I don't know if you can see that, three bucks. 
And um, can't say for certain who made this. This could be a Viking glass piece, but uh, someone that I had this color, uh, someone that had this color uh, called it like a Amberlina or something like that. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I see prices on these around 24 bucks. I'm going to put 18 on this just to sell it quick because I only have three bucks in it. I'm just going to turn it over real fast because this will sell instantly at 18 bucks. This is like finding 20 bucks in the road, you know? So find something like that. Uh, this next thing I found, back to the art. I always, I sell a lot of art. I find a lot of art. I do, I'm a fan of, especially of this kind of stuff. Yarn. Really nice yarn art. Man, I get excited. If you told me years ago that I would be getting so excited about yarn flowers, man, I wouldn't, I would have not believed you, but would you get a hold of this? Would you get a look at that? Look at that. It's beautiful. It's huge. Almost two feet across. Great, uh, like 3D flowers there. Some of them are thick and there's uh, many varieties of them. So it's got a lot of different uh, colors going on there. These bigger uh, 60s and 70s floral cruel things they go for almost 50 bucks high 40s i sell things like this all the time for between 40 and 50 bucks and this is one of the nicer ones so i'm gonna say 50 on the uh gam gam art gam gams are artists too you guys someone put hours of work into this um all right so we're down to our last thing we found some great things and uh again these are gonna all dry up when the when the outdoor flea market goes away, what are we going to do then? Um, so this next thing is my final thing, and it is something that I've similar. I've sold similar things before. This is a kitchen utensil holder made by Sears. This is called the Merry Mushroom Pattern. Now, we've been over this and over this. The Merry Mushroom things are really hot from Sears, really hot. They made everything. They made, uh, I've had the uh, uh, the napkin holders and the paper towel holders, and I've had uh, creamer sets and in the canisters with the lids. This kitchen canister uh, is pretty rare. They didn't make as many of this as they did some of the other things. And um, this was marked $20. And uh, I got them down to 15 which I was real comfortable at because I've seen these on eBay. Uh, I, I When I found this, I had recently just searched Merry Mushroom and I saw a uh, $66 bid on this. And the auction was still going, so you knew it was going to go higher than 66 So I said, well, you know, 15 I'm good. And then I researched it and there were solds that were in the 70s, 80s, and $90. So this is a pretty tough thing to find. Guy kind of knew what he had. He was asking twenty. I got it for fifteen. So, uh, you know, I'm looking at fifty dollars in profit on that. So just that alone. So if you look at everything that I found, I paid forty bucks even, forty dollars even for everything that you saw. Uh, when it's all said and done, between eBay and uh, Facebook Marketplace and my booths at the uh, antique mall, I'm looking at two hundred twenty-eight, two twenty-eight, two hundred twenty-eight dollars off of a forty dollar investment i like to triple my money i like to quadruple it so that's what i'm looking at in this one haul almost a 180 dollar profit so uh, how do you do how do you continue to uh to learn about this well you watch my videos i feel like uh it's a fair trade just a subscription is all i ask and i'll keep uh i'll keep sharing these techniques these uh this knowledge that i have about Vintage Treasure, you guys have been a great audience today. Keep thrifting and always round up.